Hello and welcome to the Estimation of Refraction Statics Globe Claritas tutorial for a 2D survey. The Refraction Statics tool can be found under the Statics tab of the launcher. Required input files are the first break arrival times, earlier picked with the first break picking tool, and the geometry file. Initially, two windows come up, one containing the picked times, the other one showing the starting model. The top surface of the model corresponds to the elevation at the peg location. The bottom of the weathering layer is a smoothed version of the elevation. The initial velocities of those layers are preset to default values. Clicking on individual picks in the pick window highlights all corresponding first breaks for the corresponding shot gather. The ruler function can be used to get an idea about refraction velocities present within your survey. However, the easiest way to achieve this could be to display a pick versus offset graph for each individual shot. Again, using the ruler function allows you to establish velocities as well as a number of refractor segments along your plotted arrival times. The arrow keys allow the user to jump between shots. Going back to the model display gives us a chance to see the lateral velocity distribution along the line. The thick line shows the actual velocity profile, where the thin line shows the minimum or maximum threshold respectively. These thresholds can be changed as a whole, on individual nodes, or the actual velocity can be set to fixed. The Claritas Refraction Static Algorithm can be termed a stratified ray tracing approach. The vertices and velocities of each layer are determined by least square analysis. You need to define an output group name under which models and refraction statics files will be saved, as well as the number of iterations to run. On the right we see a window which shows the RMS difference between the ray traced arrival times and the actual picked arrival times. All RMS values get updated on the fly after each iteration. This is always the case for the velocity model. After the last iteration is run we can expect a difference in travel time. The ray traced arrival times are shown as solid lines, which are actually very hard to pick up in the screencast. And the actual picks are shown as squares. The missed tie for the final iteration in our example goes down to the value of around 15. We can now check on our velocity model. All values for the upper layer approach a maximum threshold and indicate that a higher velocity than originally assumed is needed for the top layer. So the upper velocity limit for the top layer should be increased. You may also want to give the lower layer a higher number of vertices. So the number of vertices in the velocity model can be changed. However, they can also be changed in the model itself. For example, if their local extrema are on the layer boundary, one can add nodes in this area to allow more variation within the model. You can add new nodes, double the number overall, delete nodes, or move them. After QCing and adjusting your model and velocity, it makes sense to run more iterations. It is important to set first new model accepted to yes, so even if the RMS fit value increases, the new model will be accepted. We will run another five iterations. The RMS stays at similar values for the first couple of iterations before it decreases further. The process of checking and manipulating the model and then running more iterations is performed until an optimum solution is established. A visual check on how picks match the calculated arrival times can help define mispicks. It also allows a check on the solution fit along the line. When pressing the correct button, the short wavelength residual static shifts are also taken into account. If available, uphold times can be integrated into the model to constrain the weathering layer velocities. The uphold times must have been written to a static shift file. This is usually performed within the uphold processor module. 
This sets the velocities of the top layer to a fixed corresponding value. The actual refraction statics can be accessed via the view.shf button. In Claritas, the refraction results consists of two files. The first file contains the shifts derived from the model. The second file contains the surface consistent residual shifts. Severe outliers in the static shift results can be edited. To create the final solution, the two files need to be summed. The final result will be shown as a third plot and needs to be written out to disk before it can be applied. Statics are normally applied within the seismic job flow by using the module called Statics. After we save the final result, we can close the application. Every iteration's model is then on disk and can be opened later for further iterations.